Hi, I'm Elaine Harding. Welcome to my blog at stampwithelaine.com. Today, today's video is on Stamping Up's new soft pastel assortment. And as there's so much ground to cover, I've split this video into two parts. Today, I will cover five ways on how to apply soft pastels to your project. You'll find it on page 126. This is the soft pastels down here and they retail at 825. It's an assortment of colours, Daffodil Delight, Mango Melody, Poppy Parade, Gorgeous Grape, Mossy Meadow, Coastal Cabana, Granny Apple Green and Night of Navy. The Night of Navy one doesn't look like Knight of Navy. It's the stick, it looks more like a cobalt blue. But in fact, when you do colour with it, it does come out darker. In my Top Tip Tuesday, I showed you how I opened my box and put the colours on the front edge of the box to remind me of what colours they are. And I also kept the cello protection on top rather than rip the whole thing out because when these break down there might be chalk dust all over it and it's just to protect the chalks from contaminating each other. Before Stamping Up brought these soft pastels out I have been using other pastels myself and they come in little short stubs like this. These are the soft pastels. So I'll give you a little background on them. There are two types of pastel. These are the soft ones and I believe these ones are also soft pastels. There are two main types. The oil-based ones have got wrappers around them because they are much greasier and the pigments are bound with wax and oil and they work like oil paints so you build up thick layers and it's more difficult to achieve fine detail with them. This second type are in chalk pastels they are bound together mainly with chalk, a little clay and gum. Its consistency is like chalk um, that the ones that the teachers use on blackboards so they get a little bit powdery when the pigment comes off. If you rub it on scratch paper you'll find that it creates a fine chalk dust. I don't know if that's visible on the video. Let me tap that off. Can you see the dust? It's a fine powder as it breaks down. So Stamping Up does recommend that if you scribble on a piece of scratch paper that's how you create the dust but I find that it's a waste so I prefer to scrape it and also it blunts the edge of your stick and then you can't draw with it if you want to. So my uh, suggestion is that you use the palette knife or you could use the uh, scissors and then just shave it off at the end and that will keep the shape of your stick intact so it will stay square and you will still have these sharp edges draw finer detail should you wish to do so so just scrape it with your take your pick tool like so the application tools that you'll need to colour your images with. You can use your fingers but remember to clean it each time you change to a new colour. I would not recommend using a blending brush because these are much too big but if you happen to have some smaller uh, makeup brushes like I have here and sponge daubers an old aqua painter because these pigments will stain and so you don't want to use the uh, new watercolour brushes that Stamping Up had. So I'm just using this old aqua painter or you can use cotton buds. If you're working with stamped images it's best to use the Stazon ink because they're waterproof. For 
one of the techniques which is called popping pastels you need a Versamark ink pad and that helps to fix the pigment onto your project. You can use a china dish or an acrylic block or even a silicon mat to scrape your pastel pigments into. Chalk dust will come off so in fact you will need a fixative and this one will be available most craft supply shops. This has been specially formulated to fix pastels. Um, it will also fix charcoal, crayon, chalk and transfer lettering. It acts as a seal for the artwork in just five minutes. It creates a sort of invisible water and scratch resistant film on the surface. You have to spray it about 12 inches away from your project in a well ventilated room and it's highly flammable so don't have it near an open flame. And of course take your pick tool palette knife or if you haven't got one then you can use a pair of scissors and use the sharp edge of your scissors to scrape the pigment into your container. You can use your basic white or very vanilla, um, but if you're working with water, I would recommend shimmery white cardstock. Now this is shimmery white cardstock, and as you can see, it's quite different from the basic white cardstock you normally use. The shimmery white cardstock can be used on both sides because they both have got shimmery bits on it. I don't know if the camera will pick that up. So let's get started. There are two techniques here. The bottom one is a director paper um, technique and afterwards I use an aqua painter to blend and fix the pigment to the cardstock. I will be showing you the technique on how to apply the uh, pastels to the paper but not the card construction um, but I'll do a bit of background information on this. <clears throat> the bottom half has been applied with the Knight of Navy. I stamped the yachts from Sailing Home I think it is stamp set before I masked it. So I stamped the yachts as well onto a post-it note and fussy cut the sails and the silhouette of the boat. Then masked on top for the horizon. So let's do that. My paper is not quite big enough. Mm, it might be. <clears throat> so I've run the chalk pastel straight over. Okay and then blended it with my fingers and fixed it. Now these aqua painters has got a barrel which contains the water in it. So I need to wet the brush first. So just squeeze and then I coloured the paper. Now when you paper gets wet it will expand on one side and the paper will curl so you need a heat tool to dry it. Once it's dry to create the shadows for the boat I just use a chalk mark over it again like so and then blended it with my fingers. Now remember to clean your fingers so you don't contaminate the rest of your project. Now for the top part, I punched a three quarter inch circle and masked that. Then I mask this bottom half. Then I took the poppy parade piece and used the tip of the Poppy Parade and scribbled and then blend with your fingers. Then I use the Mango Melody to go in between and it's a slightly darker yellow 
and blended that as well. And then I gradually built up the layers. And blended with my fingers. Then I came in with a poppy parade and just ran that over the top like so and added some yellow in between and blended it all with my fingers. Then remove the masks and I'll remove these masks now so you can see the card. So that's the blending with fingers technique, a bit of masking and this one is um, applying it direct to the paper and then using an aqua painter to fix it. So I've just sprayed it away from the camera and now if I rub my hand over it, it won't come off. Now this technique is painting with pastels. So I've used the colour and contour bundle and I've white embossed it on black cardstock. So take your pastel stick and pick up the colour from the end of your pastel stick. I recommend this rather than picking it up from the side of your stick because then it will create uneven wear and tear and when it gets thinner and thinner it might snap off. So this way it preserves the shape of your stick and you don't want your project to get too wet as this is just ordinary cardstock and when it gets wet it if you overwork the cardstock, it will start to pill, and pilling means the cardstock will um, go into little balls and it makes the cardstock thinner and thinner. So I'm just using the end of my stick to pick up the colour. Next, I'll use the Granny Apple Green. And if you want to make it f faster, you can actually just do it direct onto the cardstock like so. Another way to speed it up is to shave the end with some chalk dust and pick it up directly from your palette to apply to the uh, cardstock. So that's painting with pastels. For this next technique, this is applying pastels with a sponge dauber, or you can use a Q tip or cotton bud. Bear in mind that stays on ink is not good for your photopolymer stamps when you're cleaning it um, if you're using stays on remover you have to be really quick about cleaning it off and rinsing it off almost immediately so i'm just going to stamp randomly with tuxedo black memento ink because this is dry i'm not using a wet application for this I'm just only using a dry application. So this time I'm going to scrape some gorgeous grape into my palette. If I don't use up all of it then I can put a cling film on top and store it for using another time. Right so I'm going to use my sponge dauber and pick up and then work from the petals on the outer edge toward the centre. Or you can also use a Q-tip
and you'll have better control with the Q-tip because it's finer. The other alternative is to use a makeup brush. So I'm using this one, which is long and narrow. I think it's for using with eyebrows. But I've never used it as a makeup brush. I've only ever used it as a craft supply item. Tap off the residual powder back into the dish. Don't have a tendency to rub it because if you do then it will get on your project um, on the places where you don't want it to be. Now if you find that you have some marks on your project and you don't want the pastels to show you can use a rubber and rub it off. Then I want to colour my flower centre so it's a cotton bud so I'll put that on there. Makeup brush, sponged over. But that's just applying pastels with the sponge dauber or the makeup brushes or the cotton bud. And then to clean the makeup brushes, you just use it on a e cloth. I haven't got one to hand, so I'll just do it on, on this kitchen towel. Now, I did do this on basic white cardstock. And then what you can do is use your Wink of Stella pen. You can add Wink of Stella onto it to fix the um, colour to your cardstock. This was stamped in shimmery white cardstock and this time I'm using a blender pen to apply the pastels. I did stamp it in Tuxedo Black Memento ink as it's a photopolymer stamp. I didn't want to damage my stamps. So what you do is you pick up the pigment and apply it directly into your image. Um, this will be a much stronger colour. Remember to clean the pen until it becomes clear before you apply the next colour. And this time I'll use the daffodil to light. And of course you can also pick up the colour from the end of your stick if you wish to. I prefer to scrape the powder off. I get better coverage then. And don't forget to clean your pen. You need to test it to see if it's moist enough. Um, there is a special solution inside there. Um, and if it's too dry, pick up ink from your Versamark ink pad, like so. OK? So that's the five ways um, you can apply the soft pastels to your projects. So just to recap, these are the five ways in which to apply um, your soft pastels. So the first one I covered was direct to play paper, blend with the fingers, colour wash with aqua painter, add pigment highlights and then blend the highlights with your fingers. The second one was direct to paper, use stamp, mask as necessary, blend with the fingers and finish with a fixative because you're dealing with large areas. The third one was painting on pastels. You white emboss the image on black cardstock, pick up the colour with an aqua painter from the end of the stick or you can speed up the process by scraping pigment onto the palette. You don't want to overwork the same area because it will cause pilling. The fourth method was using a sponge dauber, Q-tips or makeup brushes to deposit your pigment. So this one was the sponged one, that was with the cotton bud and this is with the makeup brush. So the makeup brush gives a much softer finish. The sponge is a bit messy. Uh, the cotton bud is better on small areas. The fifth one uh, was stamping on shimmery white cardstock and then you use a blender pen again scraping 
chalk dust onto a palette and pick up the pigment from a blender pen. Test your blender pen on the back of your hand. If it comes up moist, it's wet enough. If it isn't, then use a Versamark ink pad to moisten the tip of your pen. I hope you found this video informative. If you like it, do give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss future episodes. So the first two methods was covered in this card here from Sailing Home. The third was from the Coloured and Contour bundle and this is also from the same bundle and that covers the sponge dauber and the shimmery white cardstock with a blender pen. So I hope you've enjoyed part one of the soft pastels applications and I will be back next Friday with part two with more tips and tricks. All the supplies are listed below in the show more section below this video. Thanks for watching and thanks for joining me today. Bye.